One of my favorite tiling window managers of all time is Qtal. Qtal is a tiling window manager written and configured entirely in Python, and it's just a really comfortable window manager to live in. I love it because it has the same kind of function and feel as Xmonad, so it's really easy to switch between Xmonad and Qtal. The only real difference, again, is the configuration. In Qtal, everything's configured in Python. Of course, in Xmonad, everything is configured in Haskell. But one of the things, even though I say Qtile is one of my favorite tiling window managers of all time, I also like Xmonad, DWM, the awesome window manager. You know, I'm always hopping between all these tiling window managers. Sometimes I even go into floating window managers like Openbox and live in them for you know a few days or even a few weeks. And sometimes it's several weeks, several months sometimes before I come back to some of these window managers that I've lived in before. And when I come back to them, my configuration is not right. It's broken. There's been major updates to these particular tiling window managers and my config files no longer work as I left them. And that's really been the case with Qtile. I've been getting people opening issues on my GitLab for a while now telling me, hey, this little thing in your Qtile config doesn't work, this little thing here doesn't work, and I, I've never really taken them that seriously as far as I need to drop everything and go fix my Qtile config because I was living in other window managers. But I've gotten enough of these reports, and it's not all the same thing. <laughs> you know, there's various parts of my configuration that are broken, that here in the last two or three days, I've lived in Qtile, and I've been working on my configuration, cleaning it up, and trying to correct all the errors. And this is not an unusual thing with tiling window managers you do have to deal with this is that you know every few months to every few years sometimes there are major updates to these window managers and things change right some of the syntax changes as far as the programming language that the the thing is written in or whatever it is and for whatever reason you have to go in and make usually just very minor edits to your configuration it's not like you have to rewrite the whole thing from scratch so it's really it's not really a hassle or anything. It's just something to be expected. I've had to do this many times over the years. I've had to rewrite my awesome window manager config before because, uh, you know, syntax has changed with just the awesome libraries and, and the Lua language and things like that. I've also rewritten my Qtile config at least one other time because an update basically made my old config no longer work. I have rewritten my Xmonad config several times. So let me switch over to my desktop here and show you the updated, the corrected Qtile configuration. Uh, for those of you that used my old config, there are some minor aesthetic changes. I did change some of the colors in the bar. Uh, these purples and blues here for the power line effect, I made them a little darker. They were a little too light because it, it was tough to read the white text, so I darkened them a little bit so that white text uh, kind of pops out a little more. Also, I have this Python icon that I had in the bar. Now, I used to use just the traditional Python icon, which is what blue and yellow in color. I made it an all white icon. I just thought that, again, for aesthetics, it just fit the bar better. Uh, but again, these are aesthetic changes. They really weren't functional in any way as far as they didn't solve any errors. Now, the errors I'm talking about, one of the first errors I started receiving reports of is the update widget. So Qtile has this update widget where it will tell me how many updates are available on my system because on Arch systems it runs the check updates command or whatever it was that it was running to figure out how many updates are available on your system and it'll print it out. Well, that widget, it was called, I think it was just called Pac-Man. It was widget.pacman. That Pac-Man widget they removed it in like one of the latest versions. So it stopped working and anybody that was using my configuration, it stopped working for them. Well, the Qtile the guys, the reason they removed the Pac-Man widget is because they made another widget. It was just a general uh, check updates widget and you could use it for various Linux distributions because not everybody's running Arch, right? Some people are running you know, Debian or Ubuntu or whatever it happens to be. So now they made a widget that works on multiple distributions distributions. And, and that's the one I needed to switch this to. Let me actually open up my configuration file so I can actually show you the code here. So I'm, let me go to my Qtile config.py. Of course, my con config, it's not my Qtile.py. It's actually a readme.org, but it writes out to my config.py. So, uh, but you guys, if you're not using a literate config in org mode and Emacs, all you guys need to do is have your Qtile config in 
your home directory slash dot config slash qtile slash config dot pi. Let me zoom in here so you guys can see a little more of what is going on in my config. So let me page down and let me get down here to where the widgets start for the bar here. So here's uh, defining the init widgets list and let me get to this widget right here, widget dot check updates is the new one that I had to change. So all I needed to do that used to be widget dot pacman. I changed it to widget dot check updates. And then I needed to give it a, a couple of different values here. First, you need to specify your distro and for arch arch has a couple of different, uh, I think it's three different options. For example, I'm using arch underscore check updates. That's meaning I use an arch based distro and the command I want you to run to find my updates is the check update command because I know that command is on my system. Also I can change the uh, format uh, as far as what it displays here. So I have it display uh, this squirrely brackets with the word updates. That is the actual number of updates followed by the actual word updates. So that's why I have currently 237 updates. Now one of the other things that was also broken in this widget and in other widgets is the mouse callback function. So in Qtile, every widget has the ability to have a mouse callback uh, assigned to it or multiple mouse callbacks. So you can, you know, have the uh, left mouse, the right mouse and the middle mouse, you know, actually do things when you click on widgets. And I had this one where if I clicked on the update widget, it would run the command uh, my terminal, which is alacrity. And with, with these flags dash e and then run the command sudo pacman syu it's basically going to open a terminal and run pacman syu so i can run an update so that's what this should be doing it was broken in my old config because the way my old config was written we had this here you had lambda space qtile colon and then qtile dot command underscore spawn and then the command you wanted to spawn well it turns out they rewrote all of these widget libraries and you can no longer uh, do lambda and then qtile it just needs to be lambda without qtile and the other fix you need to do to make these callback functions work properly is in your imports you actually need to import qtile before you didn't need to import it you could just call it in the lambda now import Qtile, and then of course in the actual functions themselves down here uh, for the mouse callback, just make sure you get rid of that extra Qtile that was in my config. And now when I click this widget, you see it opens a terminal. It's asking for a sudo password because it's trying to run sudo pacman syu. So if I gave it a password here, you see it's syncing the repositories and it's going to run an update. I'm going to decline this update since it's uh, 237 packages. Now most of that is just very small Haskell programs, but still I don't want to take the time to run that update here on camera. Now I had three or four different widgets that had mouse callbacks. The memory one here, I think I had it open a terminal and then run htop and that one still works. And then I think I had another one that uh, did something. Let me scroll down here. The memory one uh, oh, I know what it is. It's the very first widget here. This icon, which is just this white uh, Python icon. I set that to actually run. I can't remember what I set it to run, actually. Oh, it just opens the terminal. So let me click on it and it just launches a terminal. I think in my old config, I had it launch some kind of menu, maybe D menu or Rofi or, or something. Now, living in Qtile for the last couple of days, I did notice it wasn't really an error, but for those of you that are running multi-monitors like I am, I run a triple monitor system, and the sys tray here, this is a sys tray sitting in the panel. You can only ever have one sys tray running at a time. So if you have three monitors and there's a panel on all monitors, the sys tray can only be on one. And the problem is it whichever one it loaded on and it would load on different ones you know depending on when i logged into qtile i guess it's whichever one loads it the fastest gets it and i always wanted this sys tray to be on the middle monitor so what i did i have this widgets list this very long widgets list this is every widget in, as far as that can be in my panel and what i did is i created uh these definitions here so i'm defining these functions where I have this group here. These are the widgets that will appear on monitors one and three. And this group here are the widgets that appear on monitor two, which is the one we're currently looking at. You see monitor two, 
I really don't do anything special with it. I just say, hey, load the entire widgets list. But this one, you notice I added an extra line. I added uh, delete and then the function widgets underscore screen one. And then I'm slicing seven through 18. What is a slice? Slice means I'm cutting it out. So all the widgets in this list from 7 to 18 cut out. That way it cuts out uh, the spacing around the sys tray, the sys tray itself, and I think I cut off a few more of the functions that I didn't need. Like I really don't need the price of Bitcoin on every screen or something like that. So that is slicing using Python. And because I've sliced out, especially the system tray widget, you know, it cannot appear on monitors one or three anymore. It's forced now to be on my second monitor. Some of the other changes I did, I, I spent some time on my key bindings because I did need to add a lot of key bindings and I modified some key bindings because one of the cool things with Qtile really in the last couple of versions is they now support key chords and uh, they when they first introduced them, it was kind of a hacky way to get them, but now it's actually fully baked into Qtile and it's really easy to do key chords. And I'm talking about like Emacs style where, you know, Emacs has these weird key bindings like control C followed by control F, control C followed by control X. Those are key chords. And what you need to do is in your imports for Qtile. Now, you know, when you're importing from Qtile, uh, libqtile.config, and you import things like click, drag, group, and key, and screen, and all of that, make sure you also import key chord. And then in your key bindings, you know, these are just your standard key bindings. Key, that's just a normal key binding, which is mod, return, it's launching my terminal. Now, if you want a key chord instead of key, you need to actually type key chord. And I've got that somewhere down here. Let me go to the bottom of my key bindings. All right, so here are my key chords to launch Emacs. So instead of key, we have key chord, and I have control E, and then in brackets here, you know, I've got the starting bracket, the ending bracket, and then the keys themselves. So control E followed by E just launches Emacs. Control E followed by B launches an I buffer in Emacs. Control E followed by D launches Deer Ed in Emacs. So if I did control E followed by D right now, that's Deer Ed, which is the file manager that's built into Emacs. So that are those are key chords. And then I created another set of key chords for my D menu scripts, which I, I like to do them as Super P because Super P is the default D menu key binding for, I think, DWM and Xmonad. It may be the default uh, D menu key binding for Qtile too. I can't remember what the default is, but it's typically super P for a run prompt, you know. And what I did is I made all of my D menu scripts use the key chord super P followed by another key. So for example, super P followed by E runs my DM comp uh, script, which is a it's a list of all the config files that I like to edit all the time. So super P followed by E runs that particular D menu script. And then I have you know, all the other ones like uh, super P followed by P runs pass menu for my password. So there's the password script there. And actually, it's interesting looking at my config file right now on camera. I'm actually noticing another thing I need to take care of. It's not really an error, but in all of my standard key bindings, I have a description. You know, I'm telling you exactly what the key binding does. And you, you put a description is because you do have the ability uh, at the command line for Qtile to tell you what all your key bindings are. And if you have a description set, of course, the description will spit out too. But I, you see, I didn't actually add a description for any of the keys in the key chords. So I need to go back and take care of that at some point. And one of the other things that was causing people problems because it was really erroring out is if I go to the bottom of my config here for the window manager rules, this used to be a very long list. You notice I only have three window manager rules as far as uh, these are rules for when a window needs to be floated. And I used to have like 15 or 20 things here. And the reason... Uh, that was broken is because they changed the syntax of it. They also changed the fact that now Qtile ships with this here, layout.floating.default underscore float underscore rules. So this particular library, default underscore float underscore rules, that defines windows that are always floated no matter what. You don't have to go in and specify because everybody wants these windows. <laughs> 
to float. They are windows for utility, notifications, toolbar, splash screens, dialog boxes, confirm boxes, uh, download boxes, error messages. You know, these are all the standard windows that pop up that everybody wants to float. You never want those in a tiling kind of layout. So that's why the, the Qtile guys smartly, you know, defined uh, those as default float rules. And then I found some things that I needed to add myself for some programs I use all the time. Uh, for example, calculate with a Q. Now that is a calculator. And when I pull up a calculator, I don't want it to tile because it makes the layout all weird. The buttons and everything, they're scrunched up or stretched out wide. A calculator just needs to be floated on the screen. So when I run calculate uh, dash GTK here, you see it floats. Before, it would have forced it in a tiling layout where it's taking up half the screen. And it just looked really odd, you know, being in a tiling layout. So now I forced that. I've also forced uh, the confirmation box within Tastyworks, which is a trading stock trading platform. I also force Pine Entry. For the, the pass command, I showed you my D menu script to run the, the pass menu command before. So if I want to get my password for, I don't know, 0 AD, if I'm doing a multiplayer zero AD game. I have to log in. And this window used to be forced into tiling, but now, you know, I set this rule here, window manager class pine entry dash GTK dash two. So uh, how do you get these rules, by the way? How did I know that the calculate window is actually titled calculate with an exclamation? <laughs> how did I know window manager class for that, that pass menu window was pine entry GTK2? Well, you use the xprop command in the terminal. So if I launch a terminal and type xprop and hit enter, you see my cursor turned into an X. Click on any window. For example, let me click on the alacrity window. And it will give me window manager class and title and everything. And you can see window manager class for Alacrity is Alacrity with a capital A. So that's what I would set here if I needed to make Alacrity always floating. Let me close out of Alacrity there. I think that's all of the major changes I made to the config as far as uh, correcting errors, like you know, things that were going to cause you real problems if you used my config. I, I mean, I did clean up some of the key bindings. I think used to, I had th these key bindings reverse where, for example, if I'm focused on my Emacs window here, I used to have super L as a, a shrink the window and super H as an expand the window, which didn't make sense because I think super L should make that window bigger and super H should make it smaller. That's the way it is in my Xmonad config and my DWM config. It was weird. I had it reversed in my Qtile config, so I fixed that. But I also doubled that binding because that's this uh, shrink with super H and super L that works in the Monad tall layout, which is your standard master and stack layout. But if you're in a different layout, for example, let me get into the tiling layout. This is mainly like a, a, a master and stack, but it's it's a different kind of master and stack. But in this tiling layout, I have Super H and Super L do something different. I have them increase or decrease the number of windows in the master frame. So if I do Super H right now, I just decrease the number of windows in the master frame. You can't decrease it uh, less than one, so that didn't work. But if I do super L to increase the number of windows in the master frame, you see I get a second window over there, and then super L one more time. I've put three windows in the master frame. If I do super H, I decrease it. Super H one more time, I decrease it again back to what it is out of the box. All the other layouts are the same. I had the uh, full screen, the max layout. There's the stack layout, which you have two different stacks, and windows just stack on top of these two windows. You, and then I had the tree tab layout, which I really don't use. It's in my config mainly just for proof of concept, just to show you this <laughs> this thing. Uh, I don't know if I would ever have much of a use for it. I, and I really haven't played with it much. I, I originally wanted to configure it and, and do some neat things with it. I've just never taken the time. Maybe that's something I'll do in a future video is actually see what I can get done with tree tab and, you know, flesh it out a little bit more. You can see what I wanted to do is have two different stacks of the tree tab. You see, I have the first workspace and then the second workspace, but I'm not really doing anything with the second workspace. Anyway, that, that may be a future video. We may do something specifically on the tree tab layout with Qtile. Of course, this is a floating layout. And of course, back to Monad Tall, which is the master and stack.
So that was just a, a little bit of the corrections for my config. I know a lot of people use my Qtile config. You know, I, the, those videos I've made on Qtile have had, you know, just tens of thousands of views. And I, in a lot of ways, I'm responsible for a lot of the popularity, the, especially the resurgence of popularity in Qtile. And so many people are using my config. And the fact that there were so many errors in it, you know, I'm kind of ashamed that it took me so long to go in and correct those errors. But, you know, I was living in other window managers, so I didn't see them you know you guys were reporting them but a lot of times yeah you know, you'll report an error should i drop what i'm doing and go fix that error a lot of times i'm recording videos and everything but i know it's i'm making excuses but really i should have fixed these errors before now so for those of you that were waiting for a working qtile config it is up on my gitlab now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Absy, Dallas, Gabe, Lou, Mitchell, Allen, Akami, Archfitter 30, Chuck, David, the other David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Scott, West, Willie, these guys. They are the producers of this episode. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I couldn't do what I do without your guys' support. You guys make the channel happen, and if you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. Look for DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace. Python's so much easier than Haskell.